He's saying, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمِ We no doubt created the human being in the most upright fashion. Taqweem from qama, qama actually means something standing firm and something tall, something that is upright. Allah Azza wa Jal is actually furthering the argument of وَنَفْسِهُمْ وَمَا سَوَّاهَا the, the nafs and how evenly it was balanced out. And now he's describing how balanced it is from another word, qiwam, meaning you can stand upright and not lean this way and not lean that way. Allah put tendencies inside the human being. Allah put emotions, Allah put intellect, and we balance between those, both of those things. Allah Azza wa Jal put our needs and our family's needs, and we balance both of those things. Allah put responsibility to yourself and responsibility to society. We're able to balance both of those things. There are so many forces inside of us that are opposing, and we find balance between all of them. And that is the remarkable creation of Allah. Before He told us, فَأَلْهَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا وَتَقْوَاهَا Two opposite forces, and He balanced between them. And now He's reiterating that reality by saying, I have created the human beings in the most upright, the most beautiful upright fashion. Like there, it's not just balance, it's balance that's em demonstrated by ahsani taqweem. Not just laqad khalaqna al insana fi taqweemin. We created the human being in uprightness. Nope, in the most up, in the most beautiful of uprightness. And qawwama it actually has tadrij in it. And the idea is that he demonstrates that balance as his ages go on. At certain, at every age, Allah gave you a certain kind of balance. Even physically, some ulama argued about this ayah, even though it's it's clearly a spiritual message. Um, that just the fact that we stand upright, the image of stand, uh, you know, afaman yamshi mukibban ala wajhi ada, amman yamshi sawiyan ala sirat mustaqim. You know, can somebody who walks on their face or drags their, their body on the ground, could they be more guided than someone who walks upright? Meaning human beings were even physically given uprightness. Just like, you know, in, in, in balances or scales or justice, there's always a standing scale. Human beings by their physical creation are a model of justice, of standing upright, of being a scale. That's actually what we're supposed to represent even in the way physically that we were created. So, and, and notice also what Allah did with our physical bodies. The two parts of our body that are most protected by the hardest bones are the heart and the mind. Right, there, this is the thickest bones here and the, 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 the most secure location here. The two things that make you upright are the most protected, subhanAllah. The, you know, like an ostrich, its skull is not very well protected. It has the, the, the brain the size of like an M&M &M anyway, but even then, it's not protected the way the human skull is protected. And the way that our heart is protected. A bird's heart is not protected the way our heart, our heart is protected, you know? And so, this is part of the ahsan taqweem. Not just physically, but also spiritually of the human being. Now, what is the relationship between this and those oaths, those locations? And what Allah is saying is those amazing messengers, those remarkable human beings, that are forever recorded in history, that Isa alayhi salam, that Ibrahim alayhi salam, that Musa alayhi salam, and this Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. These figures, or even if you want to include Nuh alayhi salam, if you go by that interpretation, these figures are going to forever be proof of the fact that human beings can reach amazing heights. That human beings are balanced. These were not supernatural human beings, they were also just human beings. Innama ana basharu mithlukum, I'm just a human being like yourselves. And they will forever be an example of what human beings are capable of in terms of goodness. Allah is saying now, yes, humanity is pretty disappointing. It's pretty disappointing. But that doesn't mean they're not capable. They're not capable of doing amazing things. And the fact that they're capable has already been proven in these lands. The story of these lands tells you what greatness, what amazing you know, taqweem humanity is capable of, especially modeled in those messengers alayhim salatu was salam. So now, even though we've been made capable of that, just like if you got hired for a job and you're qualified to do the job, that doesn't mean you're going to do a good job. You know, you have to have the right intention, motivation, heart, mind to put and focus to do a good job. Just talent is not enough. Just because you're strong enough to lift something doesn't mean you actually lift something. Allah then describes the tragedy, and the tragedy is ثُمَّ رَدَدْنَاهُ أَسْفَلَ سَافِلِينَ then we allowed him to be uh, deteriorated. Radda is actually for something to change from its original state or from the state that it is to something lesser, to something, and it's not to go back to an original state. Radda Yurudu can actually also mean, I'll, I'll read that off to you, uh, is actually for يُفْحَمُوا التَّعْبِيرُ بِالرَّدِّ هُنَا مِن تَفْسِيرِ أَذَى لِلْعُمَرِ بِأَنَّهُ اِخْتِلَالِ النُطْقِ وَالْفِكْرِ وَفَسَادِ الْحَوَاسِ فَهَذِهِ تُكُونَ فِي الطُّفُولَةِ The Qur'an says, وَمِنْكُمْ مَنْ يُرَدُّ إِلَىٰ أَذَى لِلْعُمَرِ 
that among you are those who are reduced back to the oldest, you know, ardal al umar and radda yaruddu is used, meaning your capabilities that you were given start deteriorating. Allah says you were made strong, you were made balanced, you were made upright, and then we allowed you to fall down and fall apart. That makes it sound like Allah did it. Because He says, Radadnahu, we made him, we made him deteriorate, we made him, made him retract. That, that means it's not our fault. But then that's when you have to understand the rest of this ayah. This, uh, this ayah, the grammar of it is very interesting. Asfala could be, we reduced him to the lowest, the lowest. And safilin is a, it presents a grammatical problem because safilin is expected to be as-safilin. Normally in Arabic, you say asfala as-safilin, like ahkamil hakimin at the end. So if you're going to have the mudafilay plural, it has to have lam at ta'dif. They have to go together. But this one is asfala safilin. This creates a problem. There's two ways to solve that problem. And both of them give us very interesting tafsir of this ayah. One of the meanings of this is of all creatures that could be low, human beings become the lowest. Like, it's not just lowest of, you know how they translate this? Lowest of the low. We reduced him to the lowest of the low. The problem with that is, it's not the low. It's safilin, it's not as safilin, it's safilin. And that means all things that may be low, of all creatures that may be low, human beings descend even lower than them. We become, what I was telling you, we become even worse than animals. This is Quran commenting on what happens in the news. That's when you see what's happening in the news, then you recite, ثُمَّ رَدَدْنَاهُ that's, that's what you're seeing on the news, what human beings are capable of, what they do, you know. That's one way of interpreting this ayah. We become, in a sense, you could say for easy English, we become even worse than animals. But there's another way of looking at it. And that is, that's also classically found, that the word asfala is separate and safilin is a hal. And the word insan, the thing about ins, the word insan is it can be used for the singular, and it can also be used as a plural. And that what hal means an adverbial phrase. So let me translate that for you. We reduce him, we, 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 we allow him to deteriorate to a, a, a place that is lower as he himself or they all themselves just want to be low. Safilin, the word would be, they themselves are acting in a lowly way, so Allah lets them get low. In other words, what I started with, I said Allah is putting them down. No, their hal, their own state was that they were low. So Allah said, fine, you want it, you got it. If you want to be in a lowly state, then I will let you go down to a lowly state. You know, this is Allah Azza wa Jal. ma tawalla. Allah will turn him in the direction he wants to turn into. You want to go up the hill? Up. Allah will help you up. You want to go down? The doors are open. Allah will allow you to go down. So asfala safilin here could mean human beings acted in a lowly way, and Allah allowed them to deteriorate. As how low do you want to go? You know. And this is actually an expression in the Qur'an also. يَمُدُّهُمْ فِي تُغْيَانِهِمْ يَعْمَهُونَ He extends them in their misguidance. In other words, you want to go further, do more wrong? Go ahead, go ahead, do it. Go do some more, go do some more. Get lower. Humiliate yourself even more. This is the same kind of expression Allah uses for you know, people that, that wander from one form of entertainment to another to another, or philosophers that wander from one philosophy to another to another. The image of them is descending into a, a valley. Alam tara annahum fi kulli wadin yahimun. Didn't you don't you see that they venture off into any valley and they just descend? Because when you go into a valley, there may not be a way up. There, gravity will help you down, but there may not be a way to climb back up, right? So they just venture into any valley, not knowing whether or not there's a way out or not. And that's the expression that's used. So here, Allah is now describing the tragedy of humanity. We allowed human beings to, even though they were created for great uprightness, we allowed them to become so, so very low. As, you, as we read that, maybe we even read about it, think about ourselves. It, it could be low in terms of beliefs. By the way, some have interpreted this ayah to mean we allow them to go to hell. Because the lowest of the low and asfal is used in the Quran for إِنَّ الْمُنَافِقِينَ فِي الدَّرْكِ الْأَسْفَلِ مِنَ النَّارِ That hypocrites will be in the lowest pit of the hellfire. And then the word asfal is used there too, which is for low. You know, tarku, you know, ضُدُّ الْعُلُو So some say this is about hell. Dr. Akram Nadwi and others have argued otherwise, and I agree with them. There is no reference to heaven here. No, also, it doesn't fit the context. Allah made human beings amazing and then throw them in hell. That seems to be an incoherent argument. The far more coherent argument is, Allah made the human beings upright in the most beautiful upright fashion, and they allowed themselves to become low, and Allah allowed them to go down as far low as, as low as they wanted to go. But now we come to this ayah of hope, and as we come to this ayah, we need to understand that this means two things. I'll translate it first and tell you the two basic things that it means. فَلَهُمْ أَجْرٌ غَيْرُ مَمْنُونَ With the exception of those who've believed and have done good deeds, 
then they are going to have a compensation that will never be taken away or that will never be reduced or never be discontinued. That's one of the basic meanings of this ayah, with the exception of those who believed. Okay, that means that it means two things. One, there are human beings who became super low and the only ones who didn't are the ones who believed. Right? So they're a separate group who didn't become low, they remained high, they lived up to the potential Allah just described when He said, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمٍ How do you live up to that potential? Allah made you upright, He made you a decent human being, and you will fulfill that potential when you actually come to Iman. When you come to believe and accept the revelation and do good deeds, that's when your humanity is fulfilled and completed. That's, the, that's what Allah is describing. Another way of looking at the same ayah is there are people who became so, so, so low, and even among them, there are those who decided to what? Believe. And they rose again. They became the exception of the people that were low. They rose out of them, and they like, you know, people that were in the depths of darkness, and then they took shahada. They accepted Islam. And they were, in a, in, they were like Umar bin al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu, or they were like Khalid ibn Walid. They were people that were, that were disbelievers. You may have friends that were non-Muslims, and were living a very evil life before, and then Allah guided them to Islam. So they were, they would even ask, say about themselves, they were among asfala safilin, And now Allah gave them a chance to rise again by giving them the gift of Iman. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا صَالِحَاتِ فَلَهُمْ أَجْرٌ غَيْرُ مَمْنُونَ